So here we have 2020, well 2014, well this is 2012 paper, right, showing our solubility product question. So describe five essential steps in a, an experiment, right, which can be used to determine the solubility product of calcium hydroxide at room temperature. What are the steps? Mix the calcium oxide in water and leave it undisturbed for 24 hours. What are we going to do? Mix the calcium hydroxide in water? Yeah, and then leave it undisturbed for 24 hours. Okay. So why I sound so puzzled is because it's the first time so I hear this. So let me hear what you have to say. So mix. Continue. They stop them are still. So after that, yeah, um, oh wait, you're supposed to shake it up by the way, then leave it and well, mix, shake it up, same thing. Then you come back and you filter it. You use a filter paper and you filter it to get the precipitate. And you're going to use that with, you're going to mix it with um, a known concentration of hydrochloric acid and with a lie. No. I like that. You're going to you're right. no. You I think you um titrate it with the hydrochloric acid, but you filter it and put it in a volumetric flask. Where you mix it with somebody else? I can't remember. Indicator. That's not indicator. And then you add hydrochloric acid in a burette and titrate until you see you reach an end point and you calculate your volume used and. You use that to determine the concentration, and then you use that to determine the solubility product. Is that the shake glass method? That is the shake glass method, the shake flask method, right? So what she's so that's a procedure. You shake the what well, you're saying that you shake the calcium hydroxide in solution. You let it stand for 24 hours, basically, right? Uh, generally, that predetermined time. And then after you do that now, then you prepare your solution of um, acid and then you titrate with a suitable indicator to find the concentration, right? And then when you find the concentration of the ions in solution, then you just plug it into your KSP equation. All right? So that's what you're saying. So there are two separate methods, you know? Yes, sir. That's a shake class method. That's the one. That's the one. This was on the book, so. Which one is the book? Oh my. And this took the guy too. And I don't want to school too. Alright. So another, a faster way of doing it, <laughs> is actually boiling the solution, increasing the temperature until we have until what we do we dissolve, right, the solution, leave for a predetermined time until nothing more can dissolve. And then what we do, we heat the solution, right? So more solute can dissolve in it. And then we cool the solution back to the temperature that we want, right? So that ensures the creation of a super saturated solution, right? And then we titrate with suitable indicator and suitable acid. And then we plug in that concentration into the KSP. So that's a faster way of doing it, using creating the super saturated solution via temperature change. Right, or we can leave it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so remember the flat shake glass method, right? You shake the flask with calcium hydroxide, right, in it. You leave it to stand for 24 hours so everything can dissociate and an equilibrium could possibly be reached right there, right? Or until as much can dissolve as possible, right? And then we titrate it with suitable indicator to find the concentration, right? of what is of our solution the concentration of our salts in our solution and then we plug it into the case speed. that is one with the second one what we could is dissolve what we could do is dissolve um calcium hydroxide in solution then we heat the solution right and you know when we heat the solution we increase the solubility right that means that we're going to end up with a super solid um a super saturated solution which contains more solute than it can theoretically hold and we're gonna cool the solution back down to the temperature that we wanted, which in this case is room temperature, right? And then what we're going to do is filter off all of that, keep our super saturated solution, and then we 
titrate with suitable indicator to find the concentration then we're going to take that concentration and plug it in to our equation ASP all right so if that those are the two steps okay. go ahead can you go over that please what exactly which method um the second the second method the second method is creating a super saturated solution via heat right so basically we shake we okay we basically we dissolve calcium hydroxide as much as possible at room temperature into the into the solution right that's what we do and then in order to create the super saturated solution we increase the temperature so we can dissolve more calcium hydroxide and then what we do is cool it back to room temperature that is what we do so that is how we create our super saturated solution and then all we do now is titrate Okay. Um, yes, sir. And for the first one, um, for the first one, just shake it, yeah, um, make it stand for 24 hours, and then after you just titrate it right away, right away. You filter. Remember the filtering, and then you titrate it. Oh, okay. Okay, remember filtering is actually in both methods, right? So remember to filter before titration. Filter before titration. So, for how long do you heat it up for? We generally heat it, right? Um, it's not necessarily um a specified temperature, but we heat it so. Okay, what we do? We dissolve calcium hydroxide, right? And when we notice that nothing more is dissolving, then we heat it so we dissolve even more in it. So it's not necessarily a specific time range, but we heat it to dissolve. Till you start seeing it dissolve more and then we stop and then we cool it down and allow for precipitation to occur and then we filter it go ahead there's a question um sorry you're supposed to filter the solution after your type um your filter you're supposed to titrate the solution after you filter the solid right yes okay because what can happen if you have the solid in there is you're neutralizing the salt and then it redissolve and then the um back to in order to counteract the change so you don't want any more solid you just want exactly the amount of salt that is within the solution all right so what is solubility product right we know that solubility product speaks to the product of the both of the solubilities of our of the ions right when a sparingly soluble salt is dissolved at well, room temperature or under standard conditions. That's the solubility product, right? If we are asked to write now the dissoci dissociation um, equation for calcium carbonate, right? What we're going to have is calcium carbonate 3, right? And then what we're going to have now is calcium 2 plus aqueous plus okay sorry about that that should be reversible arrows and then we're gonna add now our co3 to minus aqueous all right our solubility constant ksp you know would generally be what all right it would be our concentration of our calcium 2 plus right plus the content not not plus my bad times the concentration of our carbonates, right? CO3 to negative. Calculate the solubility of calcium carbonate when the KSP is that. The KSP is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 9. It must be equal to calcium carbonate specifically right which is going to be x times x which is x squared go ahead well, sir, for the previous question when you were counting the solubility um did you buy are we supposed to divide the moles by 100 cmq to get the condition We divide the moles by a hundred. Wait, which question? What are we talking about? Repeat. The previous question that we did, we were the solubility. 
You remember? Okay. Yeah. Um. Not this one. Just, the yeah, other. Just, the thing is, that I don't want to confuse anything. So let us just do these three things, and then we go back to your question. So please hold the question. All right. Please have the question for when I'm finished. Okay. Hopefully you'll still have okay. a question. All right. Lovely. All right. So x now would be equal to the square root of five point zero times ten to the negative nine four. And the answer here would be what? Seven point zero seven one times ten to the five. Zero seven. Times ten to the negative fifth power. All right. All dm negative. Well, no, more dm cubed, sorry. Because I'm square rooting, so it's going to be more dm to the negative cube. Alright? And what's happening here now is going to be um, one mole, right? In one mole by dm cube of sodium carbonate solution, right? In this case now, we're going to, in pure water, that will be it, right? But what's happening now for the KS here right the ksp will remain okay hold on right we're gonna have the ksp is equal to x squared right specifically right but what's happening here we already have right some amount of carbonate right so we already have some amount of carbonate so that so that amount of carbonate now, right, would actually be the 0 0.1 that we already have. Okay. So what happens when we already have some amount of carbonate? In this case, we're going to be adding 0 0.1. But what we're asked to do here is to find the new solubility, right? Therefore, our new solubility x squared is now equal to so we're adding that to the solution right so it's now equal to what let me fix this how do you work this question sir we're adding no, not necessarily, right? Let me fix this, right? So what's happening here, right? What we're doing is dissolving it in a solution of pure water. That's what we had up here, right? But what's happening here is that we already have a solution of carbonate. So what do we do in the, in the in this instance? So this is our initial thing, right? But we're adding it now. We're putting those solutions right now into a solution, right? Of Sir. these new ones. Go ahead. So wouldn't you just change the um the concentration of the carbonate to zero point one? So you would have the the calcium being the seven point zero seven that we calculated, but the carbonate ions being zero point one. The thing is, no, the calcium ions and the carbonate ions are 7.07. .07. So are we just going to ignore the 7.07 .07 that will come off in that case? We can't just ignore them like that. So, so would you add it, like add the 0 0.1 to the 7.07 .07 for the carbonate? Okay, that's not necessarily how the equation itself will go, right? So let's see, right? Remember the KSP would be the concentration of our ions specifically, right? But we have other concentration specifically, right? So if in that case, right, what we're basically going to have is a new concentration, 0 0.1. We have a new concentration, 0 0.1. Right, 
so in this case if we are to find now the new solubility right of our calcium carbonate specifically we have to do something like this so in this case if we transpose to find x what would be the answer We're accounting for the ions here. Well, Ksp is the product of ions present. We already have a concentration up there, right, specifically. But we need to find a new solubility. It will not be the same solubility as up here, right? But there's a new solubility because it's 0 0.1. So what do we do in order to get the answer? What we're going to do is plug in that 0 0.1 into our Ksp solution. With, our gen with x being the new solubility, right? And then we must calculate it. So x squared is going to be equal to what? The Ksp, is it gonna be the Ksp divided by 0 0.1? I'm not hearing anyone. Yes. So it's gonna be the Ksp, and in, test, in this case, the case, well, the Ksp is a given value, which is going to be the 5.0, times 10 to the negative 9 power 0 0.1 square root of that should give you x right so if we square root this value 5.0 I mean remember it has to be squared this one has to be squared generally right so if we have that now Let's plug all that into the calculator if your calculator can do that. Mine can't, so I'm just going to go and do it. Wait, sir? Go ahead. Sir, why are we screwing the 5.0 times 10 to negative 9? Right, because that is the relationship that we had here, right, in the beginning. That's the relationship that we had here. So, using the same relationship now, all we're going to be doing is inputting another ion, right? So the thing is now, what we're saying is that we're going to be dissolving calcium carbonate, right, in sodium carbonate, right? So that means that the calcium and the the calcium and the carbonate will be dissolving. So let's look at this. Technically, this is what is happening. Technically, our KSP, right, is our calcium two plus and our CO3 2 minus times the 0 0.1 that is what's happening times the three of them so since these two are going to be the same we can x square that and leave this as 0 0.1 out therefore in our expression we must keep the x squared in our answer we're going to end up with 1.58 times 10 to the negative 8 power. All right, and then we're gonna have here moles. Would it be moles per dm cube? I mean, solubility is in concentration, so it's going to give us mole per dm cube. We keep the mole per dm cube. And we can see how the solubility has decreased, right? So we can see that solubility has decreased because of the common ion effect. So see how our solubility has decreased? It has. All right? So what is responsible for the difference in solubilities? That would be the common ion effect. All right. So I still don't get why it's clear that... Okay, all right. Let me. KSP the KSP value. Why are we square the KSP value? Oh, it's a. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. KSP, 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 KSP. Oh, I squared the KSP. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> I didn't see that. I did not see that. I honestly never saw that. All right, because you asked why I squared the value. So I squared that, but I didn't hear when you said why I squared the KSP value. Sorry about that. We're not supposed to square the KSP value. 
my bad there it is yes, we're not actually supposed to square the case we don't like that um so the value that we're supposed to get So 2.24 times 10 to the negative 4. Times 10 to negative That's what I got. Okay. All right, because what I did there was find the, the difference. All right. So what we're going to have is that then. So the difference in solubility is going to be due to the common ion effect, right? But this value here needs to be changed to 2.24 times now 10 to the power of negative 4. Right, bad. And we're not supposed to square it. 